Good tidings, all you beautiful individuals. Welcome in to League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you. Beauties rolling on to day two of quarterfinal action from the World Championship. A little classic LCK versus LPL. And we get our first five-game certified banger of the tournament. Silver Scrapes, it's arrived at the World Championship Gen G and BLG, treating us to a big time series, big time showdown all the way through to game five. So how did we get there? Let's recap the way because there was definitely some drama, definitely some uh, dead zones in the crowd when BLG jumped out to a two Zero lead in pretty damn dominant fashion. Jun on the Jarvin had himself a day, especially in these first two games. And this is a pick that we have seen rise in its priority, rise in its power of how it's able to utilize and, you know, kind of exert his will, his presence around the map and get things going for the BLG squad. Jun was a major factor in these first two games and that Jarvan pick was a big part of why he was able to have that type of influence around the map. Another big part of it is still the rest of the BLG stepping up and sticking to what seems to be that LPL plan of we've got strong enough top and mid that they're gonna hold out put all that pressure into that bottom lane. Let's get our boy Elk, our ADC, way ahead, and we're off to the races. It was the key to success game one and two. Yeah, and listen, Bin not getting Jax is number one priority, and let Genji checked it off. We did it, we dodged that one. Elk getting the most broken AD carry in the meta right now, it should be number two on the priority list, and that one snuck through in game two. Yeah, having having the, the Callista go through, having that Zaya come in in the game too is one of those ones where you can't be given over that type of power to a player like Zelk, uh, Elk at this point. What he's been able to do, what he has shown at this event, he is in that tip-top form. What we have seen from these LPL teams prioritizing getting these hyper ADCs out in front, get them that advantage, and we will have the power come later. That's what we saw in these first two games. We didn't see any type of change any type of reaction and response really from gen g and then even questionably was the choice in game two going to that red side going to pick what they did and banning out what they did and allowing pretty much that free-for-all that jarvin oriana rumble slam in game two those first three picks insane to think that you're getting that power right out of the gate finally game three there's a pivot for Genji, we get the Yone sneaking through for Chovy. Pays gets the Kaisa, but entire year on the line. And it's Doran on the Aatrox getting a triple kill that honestly saves the entire game and season for now, at least for Genji. Bails them all out, even with some incredible, you know, I think if you look at the scoreline in game three, you don't see the power of it, but you gotta be watching those ultimates, the engage is coming through from that Yone for Chovy really clutch and key major decision you know decisive points in these fights are being decided by being able to get that ability off get that knock up big time stuff and as you mentioned doran in the crucial fight around the dragon make sure that it is going to be a gen g that is staying alive and picking up that advantage able to stay in front able to stay ahead all the way until they're able to take that nexus down it ain't gonna be that three Oh, that Bin was talking about. We're getting ourselves the full set. And there's the momentum. 46 minutes. They played it cool to close that one out into game four. You felt a little bit of that mojo. A Kali locked in for Chovy. Callista now goes over to Pays. And time and time again, it was delight finding the engages on Rel to tie this game up at two. And this is what we've been waiting for in this series. You kind of look through a couple of the of the drafts and you're saying, okay, that's not so bad. Maybe you're trying this pick up. Maybe that power. Give us the engage from delight. That is the big go button. The key one that we have seen through this back to back to back LCK championship run for this Gen G squad. You saw it in this game for the big plays from him. Big plays from Chovy on that Akali, that pick that we have seen. He was the, really the first one to bring it out here at this edition of Worlds and really set the tone that this champion is going to scale up and it's going to have that threat in the hands of someone like Chovy in this game four. It was perfect enough 
for this Gen G squad to move on to give us silver scrapes. And you're feeling all the momentum now, ready for the reverse sweep for Gen G. It's the fifth straight game, every single game in the series. We see Jun pick up the J4, and maybe the biggest jungle gap of the whole series comes in that fifth game. This guy was an absolute animal on this pick today. I think there's there's room to talk about what happened in this, you know, kind of 1v1 of the jungle matchup and who's getting the advantages, but you're not having that conversation without talking about that Jarvan pick and the and the you know fact that we've already talked about game 1 and 2 what happened with that Jarvan and he stuck around for games 3, 4 and 5 and it's really that crucial game 5 that I have the biggest issue that he's able to stay there, he's able to still Jun is able to still pick this champion and have that comfort, have that power in that decisive game five, I, I feel is too much to be given over. It's what you were getting dumpstered in the first two games was that wombo combo of Rumble, J4, and Orianna. Somehow it fully gets through in game five. And listen, I understand there's so many things you have to be careful of getting through. The Jax, the Zaya, we already mentioned. Elk ends up getting put onto the Senna at this point, but then on on the Tom Kench has something like a 2k gold lead over his counterpart at some point but game five always comes down to where you're highlighting these small mistakes and unfortunately Gen G there's multiple you can highlight from most of the guys on the squad Doran waiting to use stopwatch till he's got 20 health Chobi is TPing into four people Peanut just face checking getting caught out these are all mistakes that we haven't seen Gen G make in three months and I think everyone has flat out been there in the same uh, situation of Doran in, in making that, uh, you know, wrong equation of saying, okay, I got to hold off. Or maybe you just remember, wait, I've got that stopwatch just at the time. And you but think, not in okay, game five. <sighs> you can't, you can't be having those type of mistakes. We're the first number one defenders and fans of the church of Chovy talking about how fantastic he is, how crucial. He was in game three, those ultimates to make sure that we're still staying in there. Game four, Kali performance. Game five was a chokey. There was no, you know, kind of uh, sweet way to put it. This was a, a ugly reoccurrence of chokey stepping in at a very crucial and painful moment right now for Genji and Chobi. And it's especially because this was such an opportunity, a matchup against Yagao that everyone would give the big advantage to Chovy. That's no no shade on Yagao. Chovy's one of the premier mid laners in the world. This is the opportunity to really cement yourself as one of the goats in that mid lane in the LCK. And yeah, it just, it wasn't there. Even early on in this series, he was just, he had almost no impact and fell back into it. Felt like the old Chovy that was just kind of there farming, waiting for an opportunity. The opportunity never came. And now you're going home. It felt like a guy that was, you know, waiting for that match to start the fire, you know, blow up the big bonfire. You need to be that that match at this point. We have seen you be able to be that igniter for a squad like Gen G. You had to have it in this game five. Unfortunately, you don't see it from Chovy. You don't see it from other members of this Gen G team. I think there's a examination in this series really kind of for the first time this year. It felt like the moment was almost too big. For someone like Pays, through everything he's gone through this year. And of course, it's really important to say, of all the guys that you're looking at this Gen G roster and where you're looking to put a little bit of blame or maybe have, you know, an outlet for some of the negativity, Pays is not it. The rookie ADC that has stepped in to replace Ruler and delivered yourself a year like this that still was able to be successful, all things considered. Yes, uh, you know, aside from a biggest prize of all in Worlds and the number one target, you still got to be looking at this one in the bigger picture if you are Genji. And now it's just another international event where we are denied the Pays versus Ruler matchup. Even though both teams are here, we're not going to see it. Now it's BLG versus Weibo and Mark we're halfway there now to an all LPL no. semifinals if that happens in Korea oh come on, come on that can't oh my happen God. I can't imagine the scenes I can't imagine how cheap the tickets would get at a certain point for <laughs> semifinals and finals if it is only LPL squads uh, there's an issue with it sure I think nobody really wants to see that at the end of the day in one of these tournaments but they're gonna earn it they're gonna fight their yeah. way through they're gonna lock their spots I think there is still some 5% of people picked BLG in this. 
Yes, and I think a lot of people got sold on the BLG that got beaten down by T1 and the Gen G that locked up their spot ages ago into this top eight and didn't quite realize how close, what type of matchup this could be. The history of the MSI matchup that we had this year and knowing that this still would be a titanic showdown for Gen G, even if you had locked up this spot ages ago, it didn't guarantee you an easy spot into that semifinals. BLG more than up to the task to push Gen G to the limit. That limit is that game five where BLG takes it through. Now it falls to KT and T1 to hold the hopes of an entire nation when you're talking about South Korea hosting this event. Obviously, KT going to have their work cut out for them against JDG and even T1 against LNG. Like, it's really not out of the realm of possibility that we get four LPL teams. And I want to I wanna be the guy that goes, yeah, but look at this result, right? Where everyone was somewhat doubting this BLG heading into it. Everyone's saying, yeah, Gen G so good, amazing. They locked up the top eight. You could look at that JDG, that KT series, and try to find that same type of underdog mojo momentum. I don't think there's the same carry through, though, because you look at how good JDG is. And sure, you can say the same about what Gen G was. You haven't had that head-to-head -head matchup, JDG, KT type of situation where you had already with the Gen G and BLG to see how that played out, saw the threat that someone like Bin could be for the team, these type of things. I think it's still obviously overwhelmingly JDG favorite. I will use this as that at least 1% chance, that sliver entry. But you got to be paying attention and respect to the possibility of an upset. It's always there, especially with KT, kind of like the the CLG Korea version where their counter logic games they they shouldn't be winning are the ones that they end up coming through in classic world's fashion by the time we're getting into quarterfinals and semis all the western teams are already eliminated which means we got off-season news that's already coming through this cloud nine Jojo Pion rumor has been around since even before worlds sorry to Jimenez for that one but now your boys at Sheepy Esports saying this is Pretty much all done and dusted. JoJo's even s tweeting about this contract is signed. It's looking like we're getting Blabber and JoJo together, Mark. Uh, uh, JoJo's been uh, tweeting about this being signed for like the last month or so. The way that it was going through, dropping cryptic memes and stuff like that about what Pretending he's, going he's got to do offers next. from Korea to start their day. Come on, JoJo. We love you, but there's no way. Mm -hmm. We're locking it up. C9 JoJo. Yes, Blabber and JoJo Pion. The North American stars together. This is a big deal. I think uh, you can, you know, look at this as maybe a stretch, but you got to be thinking back to when Caps and Perks joined each other on G2. That type of connection of European power, those young players, that potential. You got to be looking at that still for North America, giving us a chance to have somewhat of that magic that EU was able to have with those two. Blabber, easily the best North American jungler, the best do domestic talent that we have seen in so long. And then Jojo Pyun, the one rising star in North America, the one changing the tune of what you can do. Love to see this coming through for Cloud9. And whether or not they keep Berserker, even if they're bringing in a new AD carry, <laughs> Blabber Jojo puts you near the top in terms of title favorites for the first split. If you're keeping Berserker, then... You're locked in there as Cloud9. Uh, other surprising news, Crowny not returning to Team BDS next year. And based on what he's saying, sounds a little surprised that he's not going to be on the squad. So I don't know what path BDS is choosing going forward. But I can tell you, even if Crowny had an underwhelming performance at Worlds, he, he is not the issue on BDS. He's not the issue. This is a BDS team that looks absolutely lost. If Adam is not playing his gods type of champion, isn't dominating that type of way and extending that play style into the rest of the team and what they're then able to do, you really saw that it wasn't as enough. I think that, yes, you could fairly look at some criticisms for Crowny from the whole year and the world tournament, but you wouldn't be really coming away from those criticisms going, that is the first spot where we need to retool, need to rework around and find something better. That is a little a little worrying, a little questioning with BDS, but I'm willing to see, obviously, as we get further in to the offseason and actually officially in 
to the off season to see what comes through in the rumors. And there should be multiple LEC teams calling about Crowney if he is off of BDS because this guy is still not just starting LEC capability, but starting on a championship level team in Europe. He proved that he's a guy that can be a difference maker for one of these teams at the LEC level. You saw that through his gameplay with BDS. You saw that at the international stage where he's able to stack up. This is definitely a player that I think should and will, fingers crossed still, have everything locked up when it comes down to it, when the offseason gets underway. And the, again, the JoJo news is kind of the domino people have been waiting for for this NA offseason. So as always, it'll really start ramping up once Worlds does finish up and free agency is fully started this is just the beginnings of the f5 season but that is it today for league unlock eric and mark here with you beautiful people thanks for watching as always and we will catch you on that flippity flip